Welcome back to 37, Physics 3740 at the University of Utah. Today we're going to start a discussion on uh, transitions and radiation in quantum mechanics. So far we've been talking about stationary states um, and superposition states, but we haven't thought much about transitions between states. Okay, so let's start by just considering briefly classical radiation of an electric charge. Um, we know from classical mechanics that uh, cla and classical electricity and magnetism that whenever a charge accelerates um, it radiates and it does this by basically producing a time dependent electric uh, and magnetic field okay uh, which uh, and these these fields uh, sort of self induce they uh, they induce each other they induce one another they oscillate um, uh, thereby producing an electromagnetic disturbance that propagates uh, out from the charge um, as electromagnetic radiation. Okay, so uh, this is what we know from classical physics. Okay, from classical ENM and classical mechanics, and um, you can calculate the uh, power radiated by a charge um, using classical mechanics. If the charge Q is radi is accelerating um, with an acceleration A then the power radiated is given by this uh, expression here. It's, it's equal to 2 times the charge squared times the acceleration squared divided by constant 12 pi epsilon naught. Ep remember epsilon naught is the permittivity, electric permittivity of free space times the speed of light cubed. Okay, so it, it's proportional to the square of the charge and the square of the acceleration. Okay, so that's, that's uh, what you'd expect from classical mechanics. Um, and as an example, we could ask the question, we can consider uh, the electron in a, uh, say in a hydrogen atom orbiting about the nucleus and um, we can ask the question uh, classically how long would it take for this electron uh, to, in, in the hydrogen atom, to radiate all its internal energy as it if we, if, if we think of an electron classically as just a particle that's orbiting the nucleus like a, like a planet, then it's in constant acceleration because it's, um, it's a undergoing centripetal acceleration and so it should radiate classically and all its orbital energy, I mean it should radiate all its orbital energy and eventually spiral into the nucleus as it loses energy. Okay, And so um, we know from um, uh, classical mechanics, the acceleration of, of some of a particle going around in a circular orbit is equal to the velocity squared divided by the radius of that orbit, okay, v squared over r, um, and of course the acceleration by Newton's second law is always equal to the force divided by the mass. So um, if we plug in for uh, the force, uh, the uh, Coulomb force uh, of uh, on an electron by the nucleus, right, so we get e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared, that's the Coulomb force, okay, the tr Coulomb attractive force, and then we multiply by 1 over m, okay. So uh, this is the acceleration of a classical electron uh, going around in an orbit. That is an electron that we would consider classically moving around in a circular orbit. Okay, so for the ground state of the hydrogen atom, then the radius of the orbit is, a, is approximately equal to the Bohr radius. This is the Bohr radius. Okay, oops. This is the Bohr radius, as we've seen before. Okay, and so when we um, when we uh, plug in, uh, when we basically plug in for a into this expression, when we plug in for the acceleration into this expression. Okay, so we put this right there. Then what we get is that the power radiate is 2e squared over 12 pi epsilon naught c cubed. And now we have to plug in for a squared. We plug in this expression for a squared. And when you and then when you solve for all the, the constants, and when you insert all the constants and solve for a numerical answer, you get something that's like 3 times 10 to the 11th electron volts per second. And um, the uh, if we remember the ground state energy for the, in the hydrogen atom is about 13.6 eV and so what this says is that the hydrogen atom should should last for about 10 to the minus 10 seconds before the electron spirals into the nucleus. 